Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about uh, what we do for uh, monitoring at Grubhub, not dissimilar to uh, at Stripe and uh, at Airbnb, but um, uh, a little bit of more on, uh, on kind of what, what we've done with uh, ensuring that everyone gets, uh, gets monitoring. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about Grubhub, you know, if, if people aren't familiar with it. Um, Grubhub, the, the two biggest brands that we have are Grubhub and Seamless, which are like the, in aggregate, the largest uh, food delivery sites in the country. Uh, we have a number of different, uh, uh, different properties. Uh, we have about 7.5 million active users. Um, we do close to 300,000 orders a day, so that's kind of staggering. It's like 300,000 food delivery orders a day. Uh, we have close to 50,000 restaurants across uh, 1,100 cities, uh, mainly in the U.S. Uh, just a little bit about me. I'm one of the lead uh, site reliability engineers at Grubhub. I focus on cloud infrastructure, which is kind of like a fancy name for our platform team. I've been there for a little bit over two years. Um, previous to that, I worked at Apple on some retail stuff uh, and at Google. Um, I really wanted to call this talk monitoring as a right, but I like thought it was so clever, like, oh, monitoring, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I use that. But really, like, what I want to talk about is what we've done to ensure that everyone gets monitoring and why that's important and how we kind of got buy-in from all of the different teams on that. Um, so to take a step back, like, why we're here is like we're obviously talking about Datadog. We're big users of Datadog. We're very happy with it. Uh, and kind of why Datadog? Like, you know, I don't know what the mix is of people who have been using it for a long time or just starting to use it or evaluating it, but like why did we end up using it? So we made the choice like right when I joined, like about two and a half years ago. Um, we have multiple data centers. I think that that's like a relatively, uh, you know, for, for companies rebuilding infrastructure, new companies that operate at a certain scale, like that almost seems par for the course now, which is kind of interesting. Um, but we wanted like a single pane of glass. It's really hard to run some of these more um, traditional like graphite uh, type uh, systems in multiple data centers with a single pane of glass. You want to look in one place and see everything across every data center um, without having to uh, you know, do lots of kind of like jumping through hoops. Uh, we wanted built-in alerting. So again, like a lot of these tools, they don't have that built in. They end up scraping, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we wanted like easy to use, well-documented APIs. Um, we did want something that would be like staff fee compatible because we didn't want to, um, we didn't want to lock ourselves in. So if two years ago, if we started using Datadog and we're like, yeah, we don't really like this, we didn't want to have to rewrite all of our libraries and rewrite them again. So we wanted something that would be compatible. Um, and like people I've talked about, like these advanced operators, um, like anomalies, outliners, that's just like icing on the cake for us. Um, it's been it's been really helpful. Um, so as like people have said before, like oh, moving to microservices is like the best thing ever and you're going to solve all these problems. And like you end up with a lot of other more complicated problems in a lot of senses. And like we did the same thing. We moved from a monolith or a set of them to lots of services, lots of new teams as we've been growing. Um, and like what actually happens? So like we, we have all these new teams joining. We have lots of new services. People join, um, join the company. They write these new services. And it's just easy to miss monitoring. It's easy to... You know, engineering team A talks to engineering team B, and they both implement their monitoring in a way that really doesn't make sense. Maybe they haven't had experience with monitoring production or high throughput services. So it's easy to miss things. Um, if we want to have multiple application frameworks, um, metric names are just different. So if I'm responsible for looking into an incident, and I'm like, huh, maybe there's something going on with a service that is uh, you know, downstream of me, and or upstream of me, and I look into that, I'm like, oh, I don't know what their error rate metric is because they decided to name it something like ridiculous. So lots of application frameworks, like you can have many different metric names, which makes it really complicated. Um, then when you start alert, alerting off of those, there are like two problems. So like the last one is basically like you have noisy monitoring, which like everyone talked about. Like that is a big problem. People get burnt out. They ignore things. They're not actionable. Uh, or worse, they just have none. Uh, like I think that it's probably like, uh, a toss-up, which is worse, like having too much alerting that's really noisy or just none at all. Um, and those alerts, they just lack any context. Like I've seen a lot and we've gone through a lot of them that are just like, someone should look into this or this shouldn't happen. It's like, yeah, like no shit, it shouldn't happen. Like that's why you woke me up for it. Um, I need like to go to the next step, right? Like the alert is step one, like what's step two, what's step two, three, what's step four? Um, so like what, what, um, what did we do to like get this this monitoring problem solved? And it's not solved by any means, but like, what did we do to, to kind of shepherd along the process? Um, 
defining common metric names. So if you have like a framework that you want to use, like we have a few, we're mainly a Java shop, but we use some different Java frameworks. Um, just defining common metric names at the framework level for everyone. Like we basically own the monitoring infrastructure. We also own those frameworks. So we've just been able to find, hey, when you actually, um, when you write an application and you start logging, uh, you know, you start ticking metrics, you're just going to use the names that we've defined because then we've built everything off of those names. So it takes like a little bit away from uh, the developers. They don't have to worry about that and we have common sets of names. Uh, and then what we're able to do is we're able to provide a base set of monitors for just all services. So rather than you having a new service and you saying, well, I know that I'm going to need to have like this monitor and this monitor and this monitor and this monitor, we just say you're just going to get all of that. Just by the fact that you're running in an environment, uh, we use a, our service discovery tool, uh, we use Eureka, uh, which is like a Netflix project. Um, but we basically just, if you're in Eureka um, in any environment, so like we run the same monitoring, the same alerting in pre-production as production. We don't like page people in pre-production, but we get to like test out our monitors. You just get everything. And when I say like you get everything, we, we, we have a few, uh, a few important metrics that we look at, and I'll talk about that a little bit, um, a little bit uh, later. But we basically just say that all of the baseline stuff that we think um, you know, having kind of the, the expertise in this uh, area um, that we think is important for you to know that your service is functional and operational, um, you're just going to get those by default. Um, and then it's on you to just basically using the easy hooks that we've provided um, to create like service specific metrics. Like if we have like a, uh, you know, a payment service, like you should probably not only be, you know, uh, you know, using our built in error metrics, you should probably be saying like, how long does it take to authorize a credit card or something along those lines? Um, this allows everything to be in source control, like you know, like add Airbnb, like that's it's the exact same type of concept. Um, it same exact thing, like pull requests. People can look into these things. Um, we can have discussions on these things uh, versus just you know someone being like, oh, I want someone to get paged off of this like arbitrary thing that no one knows what it is. Um, and then because it's in source control, then it's not you know an operations problem. It's not a DevOps problem, whatever the term is, like it's just not, it, it's everyone's kind of like a um, burden or problem sounds, sounds negative. There's some other word, I'm sure. Um, but because it's in source control, like it's easy for developers just to, to own this. Um, the first piece of this, the like define common metric names, is super important for visualizations. Like getting an alert is step one. Step two is like, okay, now I need a visualization. And so like what we've done is we use like heavy, heavy use of templated dashboards. I was going to have screenshots in here, and then like I couldn't find ones that didn't have like very business specific -y metrics. So just like picture like what Datadog looks like with like a bunch of cool uh, lines on it, and that's basically what we have. Um, but we make like super heavy use of templated dashboards, and what that means is that if I get an alert for um, you know a service, I can go to our overview dashboard, which is like the entry point. It's basically here are all the important things to tell me what's going on with the service. And I can just easily, from the dropdown, select the service that I want to look at and see 200s, 400s, 500s, errors, system load. We have um, outliers on there. We have anomalies on there. Um, all, most of our services are Java, so all of our JVM metrics on there. Um, and it's really easy to say, I don't need to search for you know, like Jeff's super secret dashboard that like, really shows what's going on. I just look at like overall health dashboard. Um, and anyone can do that. So like if uh, a developer wants to look at it, like it just is, it's our, um, not prescriptive, but our like curated view of uh, a service health, a lot like with what we do for, uh, for monitors. Um, then we have like kind of the next level of visualization, which we, um, we've basically broken out into two types of dashboards. We have these like operations focused dashboards, which not like an operations team, but more like I'm operating this service. I want to know what its overall health is. So it might have some more specific metrics, uh, business specific metrics on there. Uh, and then we have more de developer focused ones, which the developer focused ones, like you might not look at in an incident. That might be more for, I was running load testing. I was running performance testing. I want to test that my new metric is working. Um, so we kind of break those out. And the operations summary dashboards, like those are in source control. Like you really shouldn't be adding like arbitrary things to those. They go through a review process. The developer focused ones, you can kind of add whatever to it. We might have 100 graphs on some of them. Um, and like all of these visualizations, they're just meant to like provide context monitoring. Like we were like very keen on like have purchasing, you know, 
big TVs to hang around our office because it looks cool. Um, but like, they're not the thing that we're looking at all the time. Like, if something is red on one of those and we didn't get an alert, like that's a problem. Um, they should only be there to provide context. So like, we have like over my desk, I have like a big dashboard that kind of shows like a few key metrics for like most of our key services. So let's say there's like 20 key services. Um, if there's, if I get an alert, I can like glance up at that and kind of see what's red and what's yellow on there. But I shouldn't be walking by and being like, oh, why is that all red? Um, you know, like my phone should have exploded long before that. Um, this color is weird. Someone told me that this color was going to be weird. Uh, so sorry for burning your eyes for the next few minutes. Um, what are like the important metrics that we actually look at? Uh, so these are things that we define at the framework level. Like, um, you know, like it's like our like curated list of metrics that we monitor uh, for everyone, right? Um, so errors is an important one. I think this is like obvious, but um, what we do is if we log something at an error level, we just take a metric. So every single time you log an error, we actually do it for every uh, uh, every logging event. So like we can see if someone's logging a lot of stuff at debug or you know trace or something. Um, but we just record a metric uh, for every single error. And what we've defined errors as is there, uh, and I'm just going to read this. It's exceptional cases reserved for events that need to be looked into. Um, so it's not a error. This should never happen. It's not an error of a user put in bad input. Maybe that is an exceptional case that someone should look into. Um, but for most cases, there's something that is like, oh, this is, this is a problem, right? This, this was a bad experience for a user. This is not what a background job should be doing. Like, this is someone that, something that someone should look into. Um, and then what we do for other events, like let's say there's an event that if we see a large increase of them, like user input is bad, like maybe that's a client side bug, um, we just look at those independently. So it, we say where you would have logged this at an error, Log it at a warning, and then tick an independent metric for that. We could totally track that independently because maybe a thousand errors a minute is probably really bad, but a thousand user inputs a minute like could be a scraper, could be bad bot traffic. Like maybe we should get a warning about it. Maybe we should get a ticket open, but it's not like something that someone needs to look at to uh, immediately. Um, the one thing that I will say about this, and I think it's a balance always between like what you should log, um, is there's a balance between ensuring that like. Errors are logged and they're not silenced because you kind of say these first few bullets and then people are like, cool, I'll never log anything at error. And you're like, no, 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 please log things at error, but only if they're important and actionable and like someone should actually look into them. Um, timeouts is an interesting one. Um, this has been kind of the bane of my existence for the last year. Um, timeouts by like everything is an error. Um, like you timeout talking to your database, it's an error. Um, the, the problem is, is like, you know, we're primarily in Amazon. Um, we'll have 100 milliseconds of our partition to a single database node, node in our cluster. That's a problem, and if we're doing thousands of transactions a second, like uh, uh, you know, 100 milliseconds of a partition will throw lots of errors. If it recovers and we never actually show anything to the user that was bad, like we have retries built throughout our stack, maybe that's not something that needs to throw all those errors. So what we've done is we've basically said, and we're, we're in the process of doing this now, is we're going to catch timeouts. We're going to tick independent metrics for those, and we're just not going to log them as errors. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be able to um, track errors at a much lower rate than timeouts. Because if we see a small spike in timeouts, but we don't see anything back to the user, we're probably OK. Uh, and that kind of goes into like other metrics. Because we have retries like uh, at every layer, we mostly care about these 500 proxy back to the user. So um, we've kind of like changed a little bit of how we look at timeouts, and we look at them more as, is this systemic? Is this sustained? But if we see a short spike in something, it's probably nothing to worry about. Um, and you know, 500s and errors, they usually kind of go hand in hand. If we get an alert for one, we get an alert for the other. Um, but errors can obviously like fire without 500s. Some of the other stuff that we look at, um, basically like as a right, um, so we have errors, we have 500s, we have things that we proxy back to users. Um, JVM statistics, so like obviously any runtime um, stats are important. Normal system metrics, load, uh, disk space, memory utilization, uh, as well as process monitoring. Like if something died, uh, you know, we want to know about it. Uh, quickly, like some of the things that we, we learned. Um, start with sane metric names. Like we started using Drop Wizard as one of our frameworks, and lots of our metrics had Drop Wizard in the name. And then when we started not using Drop Wizard, it was like, oh, that doesn't make sense for anything anymore. Um, so start with like sane uh, metric names that uh, you know you don't want to use 
uh, very long metric names. You don't want to end up using too many tags because you know, you'll end up with such variation on them. But start with something sane and then ensure that everyone uses those, those metric names. Like it's very prescriptive and like obviously like this is a relatively prescriptive talk, but um, if you just ensure that they're the same everywhere and they're calculated in the same way, it makes it really, really easy to be framework agnostic. And if someone wants to use a new language, if they conform to this, cool, go crazy. Um, like it's been said a million times, like it's, it's easy with Datadog and with kind of like these uh, lessons just to track everything. Um, but you have to be slightly careful about metric counts. Like we've gotten into situations where we sent like millions of like uh, unique metrics to Datadog. They don't like it. Also like our applications don't like storing all of those things in memory. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful. Like you probably don't want to have like UDIDs or U UUIDs in, uh, in the metric name. You probably want to strip those out. Um, yeah, and like shameless plug, we're hiring. That's my email address if you want to email me. Cool, and that's it. Thanks.